Hey Pretty Girl Club, welcome to Decentering Men episode 14. In this episode, I'm going to talk about how most men do not keep their promises. This series is actually not supposed to be negative. This is really just kind of almost like a an audio diary of me talking about the things that I've noticed myself, things that I've experienced, or things that I have observed in other people. A lot of women online, they like to talk about the concept of finding a protector and provider and how once you find this man, you should do everything in your power to convince him that you are wifey material and to hope that he picks you. And then once he picks you for marriage, you and this rich man will live happily ever after. But unfortunately, not only is it extremely rare to even find a man who is attractive, wealthy, loyal, and meets all of your standards. But what's even more rare is to expect that man to then continue protecting and providing for you for the next 80 years. There are plenty of articles that show how most married women pay bills. Uh, A lot of marriages are 50-50, and even if they are 70-30, 60-40, or whatever, you are still giving that man a discount on bills. But what I have observed is that a lot of men, even if they do start off, protecting and providing for you and whining and dining you and stuff, I have noticed that a lot of men actually do tend to become less romantic over time. And as the relationship progresses, let's say you get pregnant by him, let's say you move in with him, um, as the relationship progresses and the years go on, usually that man's effort tends to decline. So he's not taking you on as many dates as he used to when you first got together. He's not doing the things for you that he used to do when you were in the honeymoon phase. And I have also noticed that a lot of men, they will start off paying for a lot of things, but as the woman gets into like moving in with that guy, gradually that woman's duties and responsibilities in the relationship will increase over time. So this means that, you know, maybe when you were the girlfriend, you weren't doing a lot of cooking and cleaning because you didn't live with him. But as soon as you move in with him, now suddenly his expectations are gradually starting to rise or suddenly the pressure is starting to be on you a little bit more. Maybe you went from you living in your own apartment, him living in his apartment, to suddenly you guys are moved in together, and now he expects you to pay 10% of the bills. And then, you know, that may not sound like a big deal, so you're like, whatever. But then a year later, it's 20%. And then the year after that, it's 30% of the bills that you're paying. Then after that, it's 40%. And then one year later, next thing you know, you are in a 50-50 relationship. To get into an entire relationship or marriage and assume that a man is not going to have any expectations whatsoever, that's extremely unrealistic. So this is why I recommend decentering men altogether because I do believe that men in general are going to find a way to try to use the woman's labor or gain something out of the relationship. And this is not necessarily wrong. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have expectations in a relationship. I'm just trying to get you guys to think, do you want to spend the rest of your life where you have someone expecting certain things out of you, expecting you to pay that light bill, expecting you to pay the utility bills for that home, expecting you to go 50-50 on a down payment for a home? What a lot of people don't realize about marriage in particular is that once you get married, your life is no longer about just you. Your life is no longer centered around just you. Now, if your ultimate goal and dream is to just be a wife and mother and that's it, then that's totally fine. But in a lot of marriages, you will find the woman gradually over time losing her identity. And I have noticed that a man's effort that he puts into a relationship gradually declines over time because a lot of men have this subconscious mindset of, well, I got you now. You know, I already got you pregnant now. You're already birthing my baby now. Oh, I already got you to move in with me. I already got you to marry me and take on my last name. I've noticed that the harder it is for the woman to leave, the more relaxed the man tends to feel in the relationship and the more comfortable that man tends to feel. So you may be thinking, oh, that's good to feel comfortable in your relationship, right? Well, actually, no, it's never a good thing to become so comfortable in your relationship to the point where you begin taking your partner for granted. And I've noticed that a lot of times this is what ends up happening in these marriages. So you'll see these women, they will be with this guy for five years, 10 years or whatever. And then over time, that guy starts taking her for granted. 
good. So maybe he doesn't appreciate her beauty anymore like how he used to because he sees her every single day now. He lives with her now. So he has seen her with her lips all crusty. He's seen her farting in the bathroom and stuff. He has, you know, all of the mystery is gone or whatever. So a lot of times once there is no more mystery left or as that mystery in your relationship begins to decline, the man's appreciation for you begins to decline as well. You guys have seen me talk in other episodes about how men do not appreciate vulnerability in the same way that women do. By the way, if you're a part of the not all police, please let me know so that I can ban you from the channel because nothing that I say on this channel is talking about all men or all women. But I have noticed a pattern in men where a lot of men feel very pressured to constantly produce. A lot of men feel very pressured by society to constantly be this super productive type of person. And a lot of men are actually taught that the reason you produce this wealth or this status or whatever is so you can ultimately attract a woman to come in and dedicate her life to you, essentially be your servant in one way or another, whether that is emotionally, sexually, or birthing your children. Um, so a lot of men have been socialized to believe that the woman is kind of the reward that you get. She's kind of like the trophy that you get for the hard work that you have uh, done in your life. And so a lot of men, once they've already won you, quote unquote, then that's when they start to get very comfortable because they're like, I already got her now. So she's already here. It's going to be hard for her to leave, especially if she doesn't have money. I'm providing, I'm paying for everything. A lot of men actually want a woman to get into this vulnerable position so that that man can feel more and more secure because he's like, cool, she can't leave me. So I can cheat. She can't leave. Um, I can be disrespectful towards her. I can talk to her however, she, however I want to. And she can't leave me because she has nowhere to go. But I do believe that a lot of the promises that men give to you in the beginning of a relationship, it's very rare that five and 10 and 20 years later that that man has fulfilled every single thing he has promised you. I mean, this is that's just idiotic to even believe that a man is automatically going to keep every single promise that he made at the altar, or he's automatically going to keep every single promise that he made to you when he was just your boyfriend. In fact, I don't think I've ever witnessed that. And have you ever noticed how a lot of people who have been married for 25 years, 30 years, you know what they'll say? They'll say things like, like, oh, well, you know, I stuck with him through thick and thin. Or they'll say things like, oh, the first five years of our marriage was hell. The first 10 years of our marriage was hell. The first 15 years of our marriage was horrible. But thank God we made it through and we got to where we are now. And look at us now. We came out on the other side. But my question is, okay, why do I have to wait multiple decades or spend multiple decades suffering just so I can say by the time I'm 65 years old, oh, I've been married for this long. My husband has broken every promise that he's ever given to me, but guess what? I stayed through it all, and now he's finally starting to work on fulfilling all of those things he promised me. Think about all of the ways that men entice women in the beginning of a relationship. Think about the things that a man often says to you when he first gets with you. Usually men will say things like, Oh, I will always provide for you. I'm always going to protect you. I will always be here for you. I only have eyes for you. And then oftentimes, studies show that once you actually get into the marriage and once you're actually with these guys, spending 10, 15, and 20 years with them, oftentimes all of those things that they said in the beginning are not actually coming to pass. And don't even get me started on those guys who are the big dreamers who have all of these different dreams and business ideas and inventions that they want to tell you about. And they're like, oh, I'm going to start this company and I'm going to be the next Jeff Bezos. You know, you've got lots of guys out there who are very big talkers. But generally speaking, men do not keep their promises. So for me to hinge my entire financial future, my emotional future, uh, to hinge my womb and my unborn children on a couple of fluffy, beautiful words and promises, that doesn't really sound logical to me. So this whole talking point about finding a protector and provider and then like marrying him and then it's going to be happily ever after... Again, once again, that's working on the false premise that most men are generous. It's also working on the false premise that most men keep their promises or that everything they promised you and everything they advertised to you before the marriage is actually going to come to pass. 
There are so many articles that talk about how 70% of divorces are filed by women. Why do you think that is? It's because oftentimes, whatever this man promised her life was going to be like while being married to him, oftentimes it's nowhere near what the man says it was going to be. And so what I advise is when you're with a guy or let's say you're dating a guy or whatever, it's very important to think, hey, what would my life, what would it look like if I spent the next 80 years as Tyrone's wife or Scott's wife? What would my life look like? Because generally speaking, whatever the man's lifestyle is, that's the type of lifestyle the wife will be living. Usually it's not the other way around. We all know that men don't just get into a relationship and suddenly they just become your dream guy. So let's say you're vegan and you run 10 miles a day and you're very organized with finances. If you marry some dusty guy, suddenly he's just going to take on your lifestyle. No, we all know that that is not what happens. Generally speaking, what happens is a girl will get into a relationship with a guy and usually whatever that guy's lifestyle is, is the type of lifestyle that the woman ends up living in the end. This is why we see a lot of relationships where a lot of women, they will get into it, they'll start gaining weight, you know, they'll start getting all stressed out, and they will kind of carry the emotional burdens of the relationship. Maybe the guy is like very um, unhealthy. He eats lots of fast food and lots of takeout and stuff. Then you'll notice that the woman will gradually start doing the same thing. And I think part of this is because we are socialized to be very male centered and to kind of follow the man. We're socialized to believe that the man is, uh, is supposed to be the head of the household or whatever. So I have noticed that generally speaking in relationships, whatever bad habits that man has or whatever lifestyle whatever the overall lifestyle is of the man, generally speaking, that is going to be the lifestyle you will be heading towards as a woman. So if you are with a guy who is very messy, he's very dirty, his finances are disorganized, his house is cluttered, his house smells bad, he has a bunch of bad habits like smoking and drinking and stuff. If you get married to that guy and tie your life to that guy, where do you think your life will be headed towards? And this is why 70% of divorces are filed by women, because a lot of times the lifestyle that the man advertises to the woman and the actual lifestyle that she ends up living are two different things. You know why that is? Because most men do not keep their promises. Most men have been socialized from a young age to lie and to give you sweet words in order to get what they want. All you have to do is look on YouTube, look at some of these pickup artists and look at these guys that talk about pimping and stuff. And you'll see that they say that the way that you can kind of brainwash a woman or get her to do what you want is by just selling her dreams and telling her how beautiful her life is going to be and kind of like selling her this fantasy in her head or playing into that romantic fantasy, always saying the right thing. You know how they say men fall in love with their eyes when women fall in love with their ears. A lot of times women end up in these relationships because they have fallen in love with their ears. They'll be talking on the phone to guys for hours and then that guy will just be painting this beautiful picture of this is what our life is going to look like and I'm going to buy us this big beautiful house and then we're going to have all these kids. I'm going to take you on all these vacations and then once I get married to you, I will definitely get promoted at my job because, you know, articles say that married men get paid more, right? And notice how in reality, Once a man gets married to a woman, oftentimes that man will get promoted and he will move up in his career. Meanwhile, the woman will will naturally sacrifice her career because of things like birthing children. Um, But oftentimes those women, they still end up in these 50-50 relationships. So that man will be having his income increasing. Meanwhile, that woman's income may be remaining stagnant or sometimes decreasing, yet she is still required to pay her 50% of the rent. She is still giving him a discount on bills while his career is steady growing due to his increased status as a married man and her career is staying stagnant due to her having to spend more time and effort at home doing domestic duties and stuff like that. And also there's this very unrealistic talking point going around that, oh, you just hire, you just uh, marry this guy and then he's going to hire a maid and a nanny and then you just get to sit at home and sip on mimosas all day. That is completely false. Most men don't even hire maids when they're single. Most men wouldn't even be paying child support unless the government forced them. 
a lot of men will never pay for nannies. Most men don't even pay for tutors for their children to have a better opportunity to go to college. So what makes you think that if you just marry some random guy that suddenly he's going to have it in his mind to spend thousands of dollars over the next two decades to pay for maids and nannies, all because you exist in his life? That's got to be one of the most unrealistic talking points I've ever heard. Did you know that men not keeping their promises is so common that there are whole entire articles written about this concept? On marriage.com, one of the articles is literally titled, How to Deal with a Partner Breaking Promises in a Relationship. All I had to do was go on Google and type in men don't keep their promises and literally there are multiple articles and multiple links of people talking about how men in relationships do not keep their promises. A lot of guys who say things to a woman like, oh, I'm going to give you this big house and then our life is going to be like this. We're going to go on these vacations. A lot of guys say things like that because obviously he knows that if he just comes and says, oh, you're going to go 50-50 with me and then I'm going to make sure to give you as many chores as possible and then I'm probably going to cheat on you after a couple of years. Oh, and by the way, I'm still going to look at porn. Oh, and um, I don't only have eyes for you. I'm also looking at your friend. I'm looking at your sister. I'm looking at your cousin. I'm looking at everyone around you. Most guys know that they're not going to get what they want in life if they tell you up front what all of their flaws are. And so this is why we have this epidemic of men making all of these grandiose promises to these women because they know that's the only way that they can catch your ass. They know that that's the only way that they can get you to do what they want is if they sell you these dreams and if they tell you you're going to be living a soft life if you're with me. And also, let's be realistic here. If most men have problems with lying, what makes you think that those same men are suddenly going to be able to keep their promises. This is why I feel like, once again, you should decenter men because really all a marriage ceremony is, I know that there are legal benefits to it and stuff like financially, but I'm talking about the actual traditional side of it, kind of like the marriage vows and stuff when they say, I'm going to be there to have and to hold you till death do us part for richer or for poorer Look at those marriage vows. Those are all just promises, really, that you're making to one another. But if you actually think about it, do you really want to be with a guy and be trapped with him financially if he is chronically poor? And if he is chronically suffering with poverty, do you want to be legally tied and have your credit tied to a man with fucked up credit and have your life tied to a man who is constantly spending all of your money? and have a joint bank account with a guy who has issues with chronic poverty? Like, think about the actual vows of marriage that you say on the wedding day. Do you really want that for yourself? It says, I take you to hold from this day forward for better or for worse. So that means, you know, a lot of times these women who are in these marriages for decades, yeah, they've gone through the better after about 35 years of suffering. A lot of these women who have been in marriages for 20 years, 30 years, they have been with these guys through cheating. They've been with these guys through side babies. In a lot of cases, these women have been with men through domestic violence and through that man disrespecting her, through that man constantly invalidating her, constantly challenging her, going back and forth with her, um, putting down her dreams, all kinds of things that these women go through. But that's what it really, that's what it says. It says for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer. There are lots of women who are in marriages right now where they are literally paying all the bills, the woman. So you basically have a grown adult child who is living off of you. A lot of people uh, talk about women being gold diggers. Let's talk about how a lot of these men are actually very hypergamous. In sickness and in health, we already know the stats on what happens if a woman is diagnosed with some sort of life-changing illness or terminal illness. And don't even get me started on how something as simple as gaining a few pounds can ruin your entire relationship or can cause you to lose your husband or whatever or can cause him to cheat or no longer have uh, his eyes only focused on you. First of all, you could be the skinniest, most pretty woman in the entire world and that is still not going to guarantee him being faithful. So don't even get me started on if you simply gain a few pounds or if you get pregnant because when you get pregnant, you have to gain weight in order for the baby to be healthy. So if men are out here cheating on women just for something as simple as 
oh, I just felt like cheating or, you know, I just, I don't like how you gained a few pounds. What makes you think that that same man is going to stay with you if you are terminally ill or if you become disabled or you have a serious illness or a serious struggle with something like MS or things like Crohn's disease, things like inflammatory bowel syndrome, things where like it's not very attractive and it's not very sexy if you have that sickness. Most men will leave in those cases. You know why? Because men are not socialized to be caregivers and nurturers. So a lot of men, when they envision marriage for themselves, they don't envision themselves changing your diapers. They don't envision themselves wiping your butt. They don't envision themselves pushing you around in a wheelchair or, you know, dealing with you if you have to go through a disability. And by the way, no shade to anyone if you have any illnesses or disabilities, you should decenter men even more because unfortunately we live in a world where most people are more self-centered and don't want to spend the rest of their lives caring for someone else. So let's look at the marriage vows. Do you really think that most men are actually following these marriage vows? Most men do not keep their promises. So these promises in these marriage vows oftentimes are not even being upheld by these men. To love and to cherish until death do us part, first of all, most men are definitely not cherishing their wives. Let's look up the definition of the term cherish. To protect and care for someone lovingly, to hold someone dear or to hold something dear, to keep a hope or ambition in one's mind. Most men are not even thinking about you when you're not in the same room as them. In fact, I've even heard stories of husbands leaving the room when it's time to go to bed so that they can go jack off to porn instead of cherishing their wives in the bedroom. Most men do not cherish their wives physically. Most men don't cherish their wives emotionally for sure because a lot of men, men aren't sitting around reading all of these relationship books on how to love a woman more and how to love her back to life and all of these romanticized ideas. No, relationship books are advertised to women. Why? Because women are the main audience. Women are the ones who are actually purchasing these books, not men. You think men are spending their money on how to cherish a woman, how to be more faithful, how to be more loyal, how to train my mind to not no longer think about other women instead of her? No, but women are reading books about stuff like that. For most women, you could, let's say you're a guy and you're married to a woman. On average, a guy could ask his wife, hey, I don't ever want you to look at porn again for the rest of your life. I only want you to like be with me and spend all of your sexual energy on me. And you know what? A lot of women will be able to say, okay, yeah, sure, that's fine. And most women will have no problem doing that. But the average man cannot do that. If you, the average woman who asks her own husband, hey, can you like stop looking at porn for the rest of your life and only have eyes for me and just only spend your sexual energy on me? Can you just do that? Most men actually can't even do that. A lot of men don't even have sexual self-control. So what makes you think that he's suddenly going to have emotional self-control? He's going to have psychological self-control. He is going to have financial self-control. He is going to know how to be selfless. A lot of marriages, in order for them to last, there has to be some sort of selflessness in that marriage. And most of the time it ends up being the woman who is the more selfless one than the guy. And this is why a lot of women just get fed up. And then women just say, okay, I'm just going to divorce you. Because a lot of men do not have the same level of selflessness that women have. And this goes back to socialization. Men are not socialized to be caregivers. Men are very naturally competitive with one another. And this is often a dynamic that ends up manifesting itself in the marriage as well. Um, there are lots of guys out there who get very jealous if their woman is attracting a lot of attention or she's very beautiful. She's very successful. She's very smart. She knows how to like put together things for her business. She's very savvy and knows how to like make things work. She's very creative. A lot of men will literally get jealous over something like that. So why should we as women hinge our lives and hinge our future happiness upon men who in most cases can't even keep simple promises? My opinion is that men definitely want women more than women want men, and men certainly want things like relationships, marriage, and sex uh, more than women do. And you know why? I believe deep down inside, a lot of men are way more emotionally and sexually and physically and mentally codependent on women than women are 
on men. And this is because men on average are not good at cultivating a sense of community. Men on average are not good at establishing deep emotional connections that are actually fulfilling to them. And this is not just with with women. This is like men with other men, men with their friendships, with their brothers, with their own children. A lot of men are not even socialized or they lack the knowledge or they simply do not even care. Like they mentally are not even thinking about how can I read books on how to be a better parent to my son? How can I like study how to become a better communicator so that I can do conflict resolution with my brother and my cousins and my friends? Most men aren't even thinking thoughts like that. Men are thinking about when the next NFL game is, when the next NBA game is, when the 2K game is coming out. They want to play Call of Duty. They want to go skateboarding. They want to go play pool. They want to hang out at the bar and go golfing. Most men aren't even thinking about building a deep sense of emotional connection with someone. No, that's something that a lot of women think about. But you know what? That gives us the advantage because women on average tend to be more emotionally fulfilled because women are better at cultivating a sense of community. We will talk to our sisters. We will try to solve our issues. We will reconcile our relationships with our mothers if necessary or cousins or whoever. A lot of women know how to make friends with a freaking co-worker and you know, establish a sense of community. Women on average tend to be a lot more thoughtful. So because we've been socialized to be nurturers and caregivers, women actually are more skilled at being nurturers and caregivers for each other or for ourselves or for our daughters or sisters or whoever is close to us if necessary. Men are not good at this. So on average for a man, if he doesn't have a woman in his life, He is going to feel very socially isolated. He's going to feel very depressed. He's going to feel very lonely because men do not even know how to emotionally connect with other men on the same level that women know how to when it comes to friendships or whatever. Like the average man, let's say he goes through a breakup or something, something that's emotionally hard. Let's say he goes through a breakup. The average man can't call his guy friends and say, hey, can I just come and cry on your couch and just eat ice cream and like go on a rant and then like talk shit about girls and then we can like just, you know, hang out and have a guy sleep over. No, most guys, they don't do stuff like that because they view it as gay. But you know what? For women, as a matter of fact, I just had a friend who she wasn't even dating this guy. She just stopped talking to him or whatever. Like they didn't work out. One of my other friends, she called this friend. They talked on the phone for like three hours and she like went over there. They like hung out. And I know that for me, if something bad were to happen for to me, I know that my friends would try to cheer me up. I've noticed women in general We try to cheer our friends up. We try to cheer up our sisters. We will encourage one another. We will send each other texts and be like, hey, I'm just checking in. Like, how are you doing? How do you feel emotionally? Like, are you okay? Do you feel anxious today? One of my friends, she actually just texted the group chat. We have like a little friends group chat. And she was talking about her therapy session and how, you know, she has anxiety and stuff like that. And the girls, the other girls in the friend group were literally just pouring out encouragement to her and saying, hey, you know, do you want to go on a walk with me tomorrow? Or do you want to go hiking with me on the trail? Like, hey, can I take you out for ice cream and stuff? Most men aren't doing shit like that. They're not building emotional connections in the same way that we are. And that is why a lot of men have to rely on lying and they have to rely on making empty promises to a woman in order to entice her and in order to attract her. Because a lot of men without money, they don't have anything else to attract you. And so they have they have no choice almost or they feel like they have no choice but to attract you with lies and to attract you with, you know, kind of a fantasy of what your life will be like once you marry them. And nine times out of 10, once you actually get into the marriage or once you get 10, 15 years in, it's going to look nothing like what this dude promised you. Anyway, what do you ladies think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty, ladies.